loves, it's Blona Celine and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to share with you guys how I made the super super cute pumpkin carving. my Instagram feed and then all of a sudden this gorgeous picture came out and it was from AK and Wonderland. She's also a huge Disney fanatic. I saw her picture. I absolutely fell in love with it because you guys know I'm a huge Disney nerd and I follow Disney accounts and I was just about to come in and ask, oh my god, where did you buy these pumpkins? I need them in my life right now. And as I was scrolling through the comments, she actually made them herself. So I was like, I have to give this a try. So all credit goes to her. She gave me this idea and I wanted to do the same silhouette that she used. So I'm going to guide you guys step by step of what you need and also things that you can substitute because it's super easy to do at home. I just used a little bit more advanced tools to get me where I'm at. But I will warn you, it is my very first time using a hot carving tool and it did not come out very pretty to begin with, so I had to restart all over again. You could definitely tell that she has much more experience than I do, but she doesn't have a tutorial up, so I thought I'd give her some help and show you guys how I did it. And I followed whatever she did basically through just the comments. So I, I think I did a pretty decent job. It's funny because Ricardo thought that I actually purchased these and he was like, well, how much was that? Cause I'm sure that was not cheap. And I'm like, I made it myself and the pumpkins were on sale. So it was a win-win. <laughs> you guys are coming on over from Instagram. Hello, welcome. And if you guys have not followed me on Instagram, make sure to give me a follow. I'm at Belinda Celine, super easy. And now let's get started. So I actually found out my pumpkins at Michael's and they were on sale. Those are the ones that I use, but I will have links down to similar ones that you could also carve for this project just in case you don't have a Michael's or Joann's by you. To make things easier on me, I did use the Cricut Maker in order for me to cut out the silhouette perfectly, but you could also just grab a regular sheet of paper and print it out and cut it out by hand. I used sticker paper. You can find Avery Shipping labels and use that paper as well to help you with your silhouette. But all I did is I inserted it in the Maker Machine. I uploaded the image that I wanted and you can find these images online. You can find them on Etsy. You can also find a couple of of them on the Cricut design template where you can purchase these as well so there's a variety of different ways that you can find these images and then I just went ahead I made sure that they measured to the correct size of the pumpkin and I just wanted it to be pink for whatever reason I don't even know why I switched it to that but then I went ahead and I used a specific material when it came down to what I was using so since I was using sticker paper I went all the way down to paper and in this category I was able to find sticker paper and it said removable which is what I have so I went ahead and I clicked on that and then I am gonna go ahead and cut it out and it is so fast so easy and this just pretty much saved me a lot of time trying to cut it out in my very first attempt, I totally failed and I'm going to show you guys what I did so you don't make the same mistake that I did because we all mess up when it comes to crafts and I feel like there are ways to fix things and it shouldn't discourage you from continuing your project because it's so much fun to be honest. One of my first mistakes was using the outside stencil because it made the image distorted because the pumpkin is round so I would recommend using the die cuts instead. I fixed it later on which you will see but I wanted to show you guys this to begin with. To make carving the pumpkin a lot easier, I am using a hot carver and I found this at Michael's as well but I didn't really know how to use it to begin with. I wasn't sure what temperature to use or what setting to have it on and I use different attachments. Overall, it was a little bit tricky but my mistakes can hopefully help you and I'll show you guys which one I used instead. So all I did was turn it around and start it all over again and I didn't get discouraged. I'm like, I'm gonna get this right one way or another so I just use the cutouts from the silhouette that I had earlier when I tried to trace it with pencil it was hard for me to see so this time I went in with a sharpie but I do recommend to stick with the pencil if you don't have trouble seeing the lines on here but this worked out for me since the pumpkin was darker on the lighter pumpkin I did go in with the pencil because it was easier to see on that so 
so once you have it traced out, then you can begin using the hot tool. And I use a different attachment. I'm not sure what this one is called, but it is a lot skinnier and it definitely helped me out a lot better. I wasn't sure at what temperature to use the hot tool when I first started because I was a little afraid since the first time that I tried it, but I did notice that the hotter the tool is, the better that it does carve it out, but it also melts things a lot faster. So I would say to go in between based off the recommendations, I just want a little bit more hot than what it had. And then eventually just by going over it, uh, several times then you eventually get to cut it out and I was just really really careful with this once I got the hang of it Then it made things a lot more simple But I would say to start off slow and then eventually when you get more confident then start to increase the heat and the pressure And then I used a brush to be able to get out anything that was falling apart as you can tell I increased the heat way too much on this setting and That's when I had to slow down a bit and I was like, okay, I'm getting too too confident Confident here I have to slow down once everything was out then I just went in with some rubbing alcohol to take out the permanent marker writings that I had on there so that way it looks nice and neat and without any writing marks Let's work on the next pumpkin. This one is my favorite because I love Disney so much and I love the castle. So this just brings me so much happiness. And I like that the pumpkin that I chose is white. So I just went ahead and I used the same cutting settings that I used as the last time. So under materials, I went down to sticker paper that's removable. And that way it just helped out cut out the first layer of the paper instead of cutting right through it. It did take me several tries to get the right size of the image that I wanted because I made them too big and then too small and I wanted it to be big enough to see but small enough also to be centered. So also a heads up, don't give up on your project just yet if you guys make mistakes like these. And then this time I went ahead and I traced the image with a pencil since it was a lot lighter and to be honest, this is probably the best method because you could easily go ahead and erase any pencil marks that are on there. I went a bit slow with this one because there were so many details to the castle and I did notice that once I went ahead and I kind of outlined the image that I wanted, I went in with a different heat setting and then I was able to more confidently <laughs> trace right through it and melt it through so this one was a little bit easier for me but it was just more time consuming I feel like doing crafts for me is very therapeutic I just put on some classical music and then I was just sitting in my office and taking my time with this so it was really fun for me to do because of the small details I was scared to just pop it off and then eventually crack the rest of the pumpkin. So I use an X-Acto knife to make sure that there were clean lines before taking it off and that helped. Instead of a hot tool, you could use an X-Acto knife. It would just be a little bit harder to get right through the surface, but you could still do it if you don't have a hot tool. You don't need to have one. So next I went ahead and I made a little circle in the back so that I can put some string lights and that way I could just plug it in and turn them on when I want it to. And on the top of each pumpkin, I wanted it to be gold since I was going to be displaying that with the rest of my Disney memorabilia. So I just used used gold leaf paint and I will say that it's extremely opaque and that it's very concentrated so I would recommend a little bit because a little bit just goes a long way so I just poured a little bit on there and you want to close it quickly because it does dry pretty fast so I made sure to put on the lid immediately after pouring it on there and then I just used a foam brush to get into the little cracks inside of the pumpkin I 
I did the same thing to the orange pumpkin and then I used a small brush in order to paint those details in. Overall, I was really pleased with how they turned out. I love these so much and now I know that when it comes to fall, I can carve out my own pumpkins and I can keep them forever instead of it being like super messy and having to throw them out each year, I could actually like keep my pumpkins. I love how it looks on top of my dresser and if you guys are wondering where I got Clogsworth and Lumiere, I actually got them when I went to Disney World. I know that they have them at the Disney stores now as well as the snow globe. So every time that I went on a trip, I just brought it back with me and it brings me back so many memories. And then I actually use Lumiere to stack my Alex and Annie bracelets. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you give this a try, definitely tag me on Instagram at Belinda Celine and I will repost your pictures. If you guys made it this far into the video, that means that you liked it, so please give it a big thumbs up because likes always help out my channel. They let YouTube know that people are engaged and so it's most likely to pop up on other people's feed and it brings more people to my channel. And if you want to stick along, make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. That way you guys know when I upload a new video and I'll talk to you guys next time, which is this, Mwah!